Next, here on Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman with Juan Gonzalez. As we turn right now to 21-year-old Karime Andujar, who came to the United States from the Dominican Republic with her family at the age of four. She's in her third year studying chemical engineering at Rutgers University in New Jersey, where she's been an outspoken advocate for undocumented students. Kaime Andujar is the president of Undocu Rutgers and a recipient of DACA, Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals, under President Obama. She was waiting for renewal of her status when she received a letter from Federal Immigration Customs Enforcement, or ICE, ordering her to report for a check-in this morning. Immigrant rights advocate. Uh, advocates say Andujar may now face deportation. She was reporting to ICE at the time of this broadcast, her future in this country in limbo. Well, yesterday, I sat down with Karime in her, our studios and began by asking her when she first received the notice from ICE. So, I received the notice about um, seven to eight weeks ago, and the notice said that I had to report for an interview with a deportation officer at the federal ICE building in Newark. Uh, and uh, you've been very active in, in the uh, at Rutgers University among the undocumented students. Talk about your work there. Um, so uh, my advocacy first started by starting Rutgers' first student organization for undocumented students. I started the organization with the objective of providing resources um, as well as support to undocumented students to improve the. Um, graduation rates and as well as retention rates um, for undocumented students because they're currently very low for higher education. And uh, what is your fear uh, of deportation? Have you seen uh, other students either at Rutgers or students that you know who uh, who have, were initially granted DACA who then have subsequently been deported? Yes, there was a national case a couple of weeks ago of a DACA recipient who was actually either out to lunch or out to dinner with his girlfriend, um, and then ICE officials started asking him questions. That very same late day, he was later deported to um, Mexico. So that's a direct um, violation of the regulation set forth by DACA, because DACA is supposed to be deportation protection for early childhood arrivals. Uh, and tell us a little bit about your story. You came from the Dominican Republic where you, when you were four years old, and, and uh, you lived and studied where in New Jersey all of your life. Yes. Uh, and tell us a little bit about what it's been like being here undocumented for so many years. Um, well, first and foremost, I consider America my home, without a doubt. I've been living in the same house for 15 to 16 years, um, so undoubtedly, I do consider this my home. Growing up undocumented was challenging, because there's um, a lot of fear, and there's also a lot of uncertainty. And it also poses a lot of challenges trying to obtain a higher um, education degree. So some of those challenges include not being able to um, get federal financial aid or any form of financial aid, as well as it does pose um, it does make it more difficult to, to also apply for like loans. So financially, it it's a lot of strain. Well, uh, during a February news conference, President Trump was asked if he planned to continue or end the DACA program. This was his response. We're going to show great heart. DACA is a very, very difficult subject for me, I will tell you. To me, it's one of the most difficult subjects I have, because you have these incredible kids, in many cases, not in all cases. In some of the cases, they're having DACA and they're gang members and they're drug dealers, too. But you have some absolutely incredible kids, I would say mostly. They were brought here in such a way. It's a very, it's a very, very tough subject. We are going to deal with DACA with heart. I have to deal with a lot of politicians, don't forget. And I have to convince them that what I'm saying is, is right. And I appreciate your understanding on that. Your reaction to President Trump's uh, statements and also to his general approach so far to the immigration issue uh, in the country? Well, this statement comes after a lot of dehumanizing rhetoric, um, mainly targeting not only immigrants in general, but also specifically undocumented immigrants. So it came as a bit of surprise, just because perhaps he didn't realize when he was first speaking that when he speaks about undocumented people, he's also speaking about DACA recipients, because it's not only a DACA recipient versus non-DACA recipient, because, you know, non-DACA recipients are our parents. They're also— um, 
they're, you know, they're in the same struggle as us, where our struggle is one and the same. Now, at Rutgers, the, uh, the university officials have declared the university a safe space uh, for undocumented students. There's a, uh, a, a sort of an equivalent to so the sanctuary cities that have developed around the country. Your, your response to how the university has dealt with your case and the I know the faculty union has been very supportive and is mobilizing people to appear with you uh, Tuesday morning uh, at, the, at, the federal, uh, at the federal building there. So I have received incredible support, as you said, from the faculty union as well as various professors at the university. Um, I have heard that some students have been reaching out to Barchi, which is the president of the university, for to get him to voice his um, support for not only myself but also other undocumented students in my situation. I have not heard, um, I have not heard feedback from that, but I. I do know that the Senate approved a motion in support of undocumented students. So as of right now, what we have seen um, from the administration is a lot of emails by support. Sorry, support from emails. So we receive a lot of emails um, stating their support for undocumented students. But you know, this is a case where now is the time for them to um, prove and demonstrate their support, not only in emails, um, but you know, when in action actual case arises, well, are they willing to kind of um, go against the national rhetoric and support an undocumented student? So you'll be going to your ICE check-in uh, Tuesday morning, tomorrow morning at 8.30 in Newark, New Jersey. Uh, you'll be accompanied by who and what, and what do you expect to happen? Uh, well, my interview is at 9. I, well, I do expect to get there early, so around 8.30. Um, so because of the support that I have been receiving, as I said, not only from um, my university, but also communities and um, local officials, I don't think that they are going to deport or detain me. Um, because several senators, um, as well as Congress people, have been in contact with ICE, um, letting them know that there is— U.S. Senator Cory Booker has, yes. uh, is supporting you? Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. U.S. Senator Cory Booker, as well as um, Senator Bob Menendez. They have also—I have also been in contact with them, and they have been um, supporting me, as well as Congre Congressman Pallone and Congressman Pascrell. Um, so because of the support that I have received, the tremendous amount of support that I have received, um, I don't think that they'll be um, deporting or detaining me. 21-year-old Karime Andujar, a student at Rutgers University in New Jersey, founder of the student group Undocu Rutgers. Even though she's a recipient of DACA, meaning she's allowed to live, work and study in the United States now, she was summoned for an interview today with Immigration's Customs Enforcement and faces possible deportation. We'll report on what happens to her tomorrow. And if you'd like to see Juan's interview with her in Spanish, you can go to democracynow.org slash es, democracynow.org espanol. This is Democracy Now! When we come back, we look at the Trump administration and network neutrality and Sinclair Broadcasting. Stay with us.